I'm very excited about the brain. It's my favorite organ. Um, that one, that one you have on the table or… That one I have up there. Oh, oh that… <laughs> not on the table <laughs> Because… No, because that seems to have more grey matter, that's why I asked you. That is… Pro yeah. maybe true because this is uh, the brain of an a, a experienced meditator and I'm just an amateur. Um, but these brains are important, of course, right? And, and, and um, there's other organs that I like. But without this one, it's less fun. So, also when we talk about organ transplantation, and by the way, are you an organ donor? <laughs> I told you I gave away my brain a long time ago. I also gave away my, gave away my heart. <laughs> no, but seriously, it, it's because you have so many followers. So, um, you know, we, we redefine death and we now have brain death criteria and there's, um, well, lives that can be saved thanks to organ donation. So, um, are you okay to, after death, give your organs? I'm not uh, right now planning to die so soon, so... Let's see when it comes, huh? By the time… by the time I die, at least I, my brains, I would have used it up fully <laughs> Stephen, I thought I will… Uh, sorry, go ahead, Stephen. No, 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 no. Uh, so, so I think that the, the uh, example of a transplantation is, is of course interesting um, in a sense that it shows kind of the importance of the brain, right? Because you can uh, replace nearly every organ and we can now indeed even replace the heart um, and it would still fundamentally not change the way you think and feel and, and perceive emotions but of course for the brain it's, it's different so there, there is something special about this uh, organ but and there uh, we shouldn't be too arrogant when it comes to the big question of consciousness and explaining thoughts and perception and emotions, we just have a terribly hard time to go from something material, that is this brain, and to this very first-person subjective experience. Um, so there, for you, I understand that uh, the brain is not the whole story, right? If, if I'm correct and, and, and that there's… I… I generally think through my whole body, really. And, and that is true. That, that, that is, is why… True. that is why I can do uh, two dozen things at the same time and don't feel any stress because I use every cell in my body. Okay. Because okay. what you're referring to as intelligence, essentially, in most people's experience, I… I'm not somebody who's propounding this, but in most people's experience, a certain combination of memory and intelligence is what they're calling as mind, isn't it? Yes, it's… it's difficult because we're talking about definitions, but yes. So, tell me, uh, in every cell in your body, there's much, much more memory than it's there in your brain. And the number of complex functions that every cell in your body is functioning, you can never figure it out in your brain, the amount of chemical reactions that are happening across, not necessarily managed by your brain, it's happening of its own nature. So, when they are able to do so much, there is an intelligence. So in yoga, we don't say mind is here or there, we say there is a mental body. As there is a physical body, there is a mental body, there is a… there is a whole scape of memory and intelligence spread across the… Uh, system. But now I believe, uh, you know, we, we've always given a lot of significance to this, but I understand now these days doctors are saying there is uh, quite a bit of brain in the stomach. Am I right? Yes. What we… Uh, what do they call this? Uh, Bala? What do they call that? I heard that… The second brain, some call it, and so indeed we have a lot of these nerve cells in our gut, yet if I have to choose between losing those or those uh, nerve cells, I think I rather have the brain. And I think again, we can transplant your gut and it wouldn't really fundamentally change 
who and what you I'm you are. Transplantation. Sorry. I'm not so sure about the gut transplantation. It's not so widely done. No, no, no. Of course, but um, we. I agree. I agree. We, brain, no transplantation. You anesthetize them. You can you can change the activity of of that autonomous system, um, and the impact would be very different, right? Than whether you change the activity of those brain cells. So, I think we all agree that the brain is is something important, right? And and no no, no question about that. There's no question about whether brain is important or not, but brain is important and it's functional only because of the connectivity to the rest of the body with the neurological system. Suppose you cut uh, something in your spine, then the brain cannot function by itself and it's meaningless what it does, only because it's connected. So how yoga sees brain is not as an organ per se, it is part of the neurological system, it's like one big knot where more is happening in one place than the rest of the places. But it doesn't mean it is not happening in the rest of the place. So uh, that's why I said, I think through my body. This is why even if you're doing two dozen things at the same time, you don't have any level of stress because it is like, if you're just thinking just here, what it means is, you bought a car with four wheels, but you drive it on one wheel all the time. Obviously, one will wear out very quickly and there's too much stress. Every time people have to do something, simple things, if they have to decide what clothes to wear, where to go, what to do, they get so stressed on a daily basis because they're using just one dimension of their intelligence, not exercising other dimensions of their intelligence. And that you can train through yoga is… is... Oh, de oh, definitely, yes. Swarupa Isha